Hello everyone, hope you're doing fantastic today. It's a nice rainy day where I'm at. So I thought we'd do just a, you know, just a pleasant little painting. So I've got a little bit different canvas here today than I normally do. It's just a 9x6 paint, uh, canvas. I'm in Rebel 6 Pro and I've got the pigments to uh, turned on so I can use the natural pigments. Color set is the oils and I've got some different brushes here. I'm going to use some of my custom brushes and a few for my patrons that I've made. that I'll be giving them and going to play around with some different things uh, as well to kind of uh, show those brushes off and, and, and work on those and just some different techniques. Uh, you won't necessarily have to use my brushes to do this painting, but um, hopefully it'll give you some ideas of things that you can try and play around with and just some of the different techniques. There's also some uh, different filters and stuff I want to play around with that people have asked me about. So this uh, canvas here is kind of a sea green kind of color that I've uh, chosen. And this is the color right there. So if you want to use that color, that way you know what it is. So I'm going to go to my selection tool and I'm going to bring the horizon line down um, to right about maybe right about there. And I'm going to hit enter. And I've got just one layer here right now. And I'm going to go ahead and select a blue color. And maybe go up a little bit. Let's see how this one looks. It's a little too blue, too stark. I'm going to bring that down and mute it a little bit. Yeah, something more like that. So I've got that laid in there, and I'm going to come down here. I've made a brush called Fluffy Cloud. I'm just going to play around with this one real quick here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of a kind of a muted purplish color and I'm going to bring that down a little bit less purple a little bit more white in it and all I want to do here is just kind of sketch in just some lines and you could do this with any brush really I'm just laying in some color right now where I want to have some ideas of some clouds. I'm going to grab this plain air and throw in some of it as well. And this is kind of a, a fun little brush that I made. You'll see it more here in a second, but for right now I'm just kind of throwing in some color. So I've got that laid in there. I'm going to push four. And now just kind of smear these all together. And just kind of let them do their thing. trying to do is just give the hint of some clouds off in the distance. Just some quick variation of color really more than anything else. Because we're going to build on top of this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger by hitting my right bracket key and just kind of quickly go over it. something like that. So it's just real subtle, real soft. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue. 
I'll lay some of that in there too. And press four. Just kind of real softly come back in here. Hit one. Like so. Press four. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to Filter, come down to Gaussian Blur, bring this up a little bit, maybe about 20 or so, maybe 25. Tell it apply. All right. So now I grab my white and I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to bring my bracket size down. And I'm still on the fluffy cloud. I'm going to push 2. And I'm just going to lay in the beginning of some cloud shapes. And all I'm looking at is the kind of the top of the clouds. Thinking my lighting is kind of coming down this way. Okay. All right. So I've kind of got that there. Just some random, you know, just random shapes. Now I'm going to push four. Bring my size down. I'm just going to make these little circles. And kind of fade it in. Something kind of like that. And that is where this brush really works great. It's building up these fluffy clouds. Hence the name. So this one works just fantastic for kind of sculpting out these wonderful thick clouds kind of off in the distance. Fade them in. And let them kind of drift off for like if you're wanting these diffused kind of clouds. And you can build this up as much as you want by dragging this paint around because this is actually built off of one of the oil brushes. And so, because of that, you can really drag this paint in and around and get some nice soft subtle transitions and it's got some good texture to it so you can really um, kind of sculpt the different uh, highlights and everything with it So 
if you're trying to build up these just kind of soft, subtle, fluffy clouds in the background. You can, again, you can build these up to be really strong, but I'm trying to just have some way off in the distant clouds. So I want these to be really soft. You know, where they just kind of fade into a haze like that. And that's what this brush is good at. And if, I find if you just kind of randomly shake and twist, it really keeps you, gives you some nice kind of look. And then you can come back down to this layer down here and kind of do the same with some of this and break up some of those lines and kind of give the indication that there may be some stuff off in the distance and kind of like that. They just kind of softly fade out the bottom. So now I'm going to blur this just a little bit because I do, like I said, I want this to be off in the distance. So I'm just going to Gaussian blur, but not quite as much. Just real, like just two, something like that. Okay, Control D. All right, so I'm going to make another layer. Now in this, I want there to be another hint of stuff off in the background. I want there to be kind of a mountain here, so I'm going to kind of bring in something like this, and then just kind of a quick jagged along here. And I'm just going to come way down like this and then back up, and I've got it to add. So I'm just going to go off the canvas and around and like so. Okay, I'm going to go to subtract and I'm going to select my rectangular and I'm going to come up and around and hit enter. And now I've got my horizon line reestablished. All right, so now for this, what I want is I'm going to select this purplish color here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to come down to where it's darker. I'm going to go over to where it's a little bit more purple. See how this looks. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that's a good place to start. <coughs> I've got my mountain brush here. So I'm going to grab a little bit lighter and I'm just going to kind of randomly kick in just some highlights of where some cliff edges and stuff could be like so And just thinking about the direction of where everything's going here. I'm going to bring this over. Maybe something like this. Just kind of, you know, break this up a little bit. So it just gives the indication of some topography. Stuff like that.
Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to select that. I want to warm it up just a little bit. So I'm going to come straight across or as, as straight across as I can. Actually, I may want to go over here more towards the orange and yellow. Select that and just kind of put in a little bit on top of these areas that I just painted. So it adds a little bit of just warmth to it. Again, nothing crazy. Just a little bit here and there. Like so. And that kind of warms it up and makes it look like it's maybe getting hit by some sunlight. Maybe over here as well. Okay, something like that. Then I'm going to grab, come up, desaturate a little bit, come up a little bit brighter. I'm just going to add some random splotches of color here and there. Kind of this lighter just kind of down here something like that maybe just a little bit here and there up in here as well again just a few spots nothing crazy Just some stuff here and there. And I'm going to come back to Filter. I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to bring that up maybe just like three. Something like that. So again, nothing crazy. Just so that it's out of focus. And apply it. And Control D. All right. Now I want to put one more layer. So between this one and this one, I'm going to come down, create another layer. I'm going to come back up to my selection tool. And I'm going to make maybe another something like this. Okay. I come in here to this darker color. I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over the blue a little bit more. Maybe come up a little bit. Something like that. Let's see how this one looks. Oops. Okay, so it did that because I didn't realize I still had it on subtract. I wasn't paying attention. So it subtracted everything around it. So all I got to do is do shift control I and it reversed it. So now I've got it selected for what I need. Okay. And I can select the fill tool and fill it. Now that's just a little dark, but it kind of fits what I'm wanting. So I'm going to come up here, come down a little bit. And I want to make it just a little more blue. There we go. Because remember, the further away it is, the more blue it's going to get. So now we've got this nice far off, gives us a little bit more atmospheric perspective. Okay. Now again, I want to just slightly blur it so I don't have that crisp edge. So we're going to Gaussian blur and we'll tell it apply. So that just blurred the edge ever so slightly. All right. Now what I want to do I'm going to come here, I'm going to make a new layer, I'm going to grab my airbrush, I'm going to bring my size down, I'm going to zoom out just so I can have more room. Now I've got a little bit of issue here where I can have like a little bit of selection tool. That's, that's one thing with Rebel that's kind of interesting is when you do the selection sometimes it leaves like a little ghost image right there on the side. So what I'm going to do to fix that, I'm going to select all of these. 
I'm going to press T. I'm going to grab this on the edge right here and just drag it over and hit enter. There we go. Let's see that gets rid of that. Okay. All right. So now I've got my one here that's nothing on it. So what I want to do now is I'm going to select this background color. And I'm going to come down to where it's darker. Reduce my opacity. I'm going to get over a little bit of blue, more blue into that. There we go. Now I'm going to press Shift. And I'm going to come straight across. And we see how that snaps into place. And now I'm going to just click and hold down. I'm going to use my mouse for this. So I'm going to click and hold down. And then I can draw straight across. And it's going to stay in that line. Okay. So that's what I just did there. All right. So that gives me that horizon line right there. And then I'm going to do it again, a little bit lower and a little bit. The other one I went over like three or four times. I'm going to go over this one just like twice. And then I'm going to do it again, like so. OK. So I'm purposely getting those striations in there. And now I'm just going to kind of come in here and freehand some of these striations and just kind of knock some of these in here. And I'm making kind of this motion, right? Like so, OK? And I may even make this just a little bit more blue, like so. It's very subtle. All right. Come along here as well. So something like that. All right. So I've got that. So now I'm going to come back up to Filter. I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur. I'm going to come up to maybe 5. Uh, maybe 10, actually. I'm looking at the preview to see where I like it. Uh, 15, I guess. OK. I'm going to duplicate that layer because I want that darker up there. All right. So I'm going to switch this to four. So I've got the blending. And I'm going to come along here and I'm just going to kind of go along this base and kind of rub along that. OK. And then I'm going to come along and push 5 and come along the top of it and erase it back down. Actually, I'm going to control click, control D, control click this layer. I've got my eraser on. I'm going to turn the opacity up all the way. Or almost yeah, all the way. So now I'm erasing. There we go. Just delete that. Layer 5, hit delete again. There we go. So now I've got those two layers. I'm going to merge that layer down. Okay. So now I'm going to press 4 and 
come along through here and just kind of softly blend it. And I could even go down to this layer here for the mountains and just kind of blend that softly too. Something like that. But I think I'll come back to this. All right, so I've got that laid in there. That looks kind of wonky, but that's okay because we're about to actually cover it up. So I'm going to select my stencil, and this is Waves-2. I'm going to turn off Lock Ratio. I'm going to stretch it out to fit. Turn back on Lock Ratio, and I'm going to bring the size up. Just like so. Zoom this out border it. I'm going to hit I real quick so I can select this. And then I'm going to zoom in. And I can grab different brushes. i got a seafoam brush here. I'm going to show you in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and grab something like, well, I guess I can just use the airbrush. doing now is just kind of going back over that to lay in where I want to put some of the ocean grabbing some of this darker as well oops let me zoom that out Grab this again. Go a little bit more yellow. A little less saturated. the blending tool and just kind of softly see if I can blend it all together a little bit okay and like knock the uh, stencil backs so now I've got that on there I can come back to my favorite brushes and I can come back up to my filter Gaussian blur bring that back down to like two apply I'm gonna come over here to well I'll show you the sea foam one so I'm going to bring the seafoam one down. I'm going to put it on blend for now. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use it so I'm going in a stroke pattern. Let me show you here. I'll switch to one and kind of this X pattern. Okay. So that's what I'm doing with the blending tool partial blending tool option turned on. So I've got four pushed. And so now I'm just going to kind of start at the top and kind of work my way down and across. And 
and this kind of works perfectly with the C pattern from the stencil because this brush is designed to do sea foam, which I will show you here in just a second. Now I'm not blending all of these, I'm just blending some of them. Really kind of the majority of them, but not all of them. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to press Alt. And I'm going to select some of this cloud color up here. And I'm going to come back down here. And I'm going to start using this brush to lay in, again, the same little strokes, but staying very horizontal. Start laying in some sea foam. Press four and just kind of smooth it out and blend it in. And this brush, the reason it works, so let me show you down here a little bit, is it has a lot of texture and stuff built into it to give that foamy kind of look that sea foam has. So let me come to here real quick. So like say for example, I wanted to have maybe one here, maybe something here, maybe something here. So I wanted to throw in some rocks like that. And then paint some sea foam coming around them. The 
this brush works just great for it. Because it has, again, I built it so that it has that kind of feel and, whoops, texture to it. So it's got that, see, it's got that rough texture to it. So it works great for waves and seafoam. And then when you get it all kind of laid in there, you can kind of start using it to blend it into the environment. Around it, just like so. starting to bark like crazy and I'm gonna save this real quick so I'll be right back all right so now that that's saved I want to adjust this a little bit before I keep painting on it because I know I want to put some stuff in the foreground so I'm just gonna press T and I'm gonna bring this up a little bit then maybe right about there which is also gonna kind of change the perspective a little bit on the waves something maybe like that okay filter hue saturation I'll see the saturation down just a little bit lightness down just a little bit apply it it's pretty subtle I know but does change it some. All right, so the main thing through here is I want to kind of keep putting in some of this sea foam and just kind of keep playing around. I'm getting some really serious lag for my system right now. This brush is not laggy. This is not one of those brushes that does a lot of stuff in the background and lags. It's just my uh, system is lagging from the recorder. You see how this brush, you can really get some nice kind of grungy looking wave type stuff without you really think about it too much. I designed this brush to do a lot of the work for us. The main thing when you're putting in foam is do leave gaps in it because foam will break. Now you can also, I'm doing this on this layer. You can do it on a separate layer above it. So that way, if you want to leave spaces in it, you can, or go back and erase it, you can. I'm pretty comfortable with um, just kind of painting it on it. But if you want to leave the space, I mean, do it on a separate layer, then do so. And I just selected a different color. So I can go in and just kind of paint this in here. I think you guys will like this foam brush and that cloud brush. But the main thing with this is just try to keep it, I don't know, my dog doesn't want me to record today apparently. Just kind of keep it horizontal. That's what I was going to say.
And then just some random ones out here, like some white caps. And that'll give that real tie it in kind of feel. And I'm just letting my pen graze across. Maybe just kind of a hint of a wave right here. This breaking. A brighter color. It helps to kind of put some of the brighter on top of some of the duller because then it really gives you that feeling of it's capturing some of the light here and there. Like so. Alright, so something like that. We'll kick up here from the V. Let's bounce it up and down a little bit. Like that. Alright, there we go. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to save this real quick. And I want to put something right in here with some uh, ground. So I'm going to grab this color right here and we'll just fill this like so. Control D, grab this one here. And just grab this old brush here. I'm just going to kind of throw in some color. This rough dry brush one here. Just want to give this um, a little bit of a rough texture. Like so. Bring this dry knife one. Go along, get rid of this sharp edge. Okay. Something like that. And I'm put it on four. Just kind of go in and scrub this a little bit break it up. Now a good portion of this is not going to end up showing, so but I just want it kind of here for the under underbrush. And I want to grab our stencil that it pulls. Again I'm going to turn off lock size ratio. I'm going to stretch it. And I'm going to lock the size ratio back. Up in size. Right click it and drag it down. I'm going to turn on lock transparency. And then I'm going to grab maybe this color here. Just kind of throw that in here and there. Real kind of loose. Maybe grab like this Payne's Gray, throw it in as well, Maybe a little of this Burnt Sienna, and maybe this lighter color again. Okay, once I got that all there, press 4, increase the brush size, and just kind of go back over it a little bit. Then I'm going to grab this and move it around. Kind of go back over it some more. And maybe grab this one here. Just kind of hit it. And then four again. I can grab a little of this green maybe. 
and then four. So I'm just adding some texture like that. Okay. Because again, some of this is going to, majority of this is going to be hidden. All right. So let's make a new layer. And now what I want to do here is I want to put in some uh, flowers. So I've got kind of this sagey green here. And let's look at this brown soft. It's not too bad. Let's go with some little texture though. Let my oily round. Zoom in a little bit so I can see it better. It's not too bad. With a grainy pin. Too bad. Oily round. I'm trying to kind of get a feel for the one that I want to use. Let's look at some of the ones that we've got here with this hard round. Let's go with this one. So one I want to put here are a bunch of little kind of seagrass. looking grasses. I've also got to figure out my color because though I'm thinking kind of a sage green kind of kind of a feel. So just a bunch of them all kind of in here. It's a whole lot of texture. It's kind of really densely packed in. Something like this. And then what I'm thinking is, is once I've got some of this painted in, maybe lock the transparency. Go with a darker green. Oh, maybe that's too dark. Put in a little bit of something like that. I can kind of play around with the texture. Then I can duplicate it, merge that down again.
of the so then I can kind of play around with that. That'll help me with uh, a little bit of the time. Got these in here. Then I'm thinking, once I've got those in there. I can make a new layer. Maybe grab something like this, perhaps. Maybe something flowers in here. You know, maybe some of these, put some of these in and around here. So we end up having all these down through here. It's kind of my thought. This back here. Blur it out. So we'll have that there. And then up here. We can start to have oops. Also start to have some switch pins. Some grasses. And the like. So maybe we just start filling all that in with some different stuff. So that's my thoughts. So I'm going to start doing on that and working on this. So let me save this real quick and we'll be back. All right. So it is um, actually the next day since the previous time I was recording. And I've done a few things since then. We actually had some storms come through and knocked out power and everything else. So I had some time to step away and came back. And I've done a couple things since then just to kind of collect my thoughts and, and get some uh, ideas down. So what I've done is I've labeled everything first and foremost over here that I had um, kind of left to work on. And then I went in and I sketched out kind of an idea of where I want the flowers and, you know, just an idea of kind of where I want them to be. And I'm doing a few more over in this area and then kind of letting them drift off because I plan on putting a little bit more grass over here. And that's going to kind of balance everything out, I think, for um, what we're looking at. And I think I may put a few like 
bright spots back here in the water as well to kind of balance it out. So, and then also in some of the grass to kind of pull it forward a little bit and uh, break it out from here. If you kind of squint your eyes a little bit, this kind of blends in to this back here. So I'm gonna um, play around with the color of this, uh, the leaves from the, the flowers here um, and kind of see if I can't get a little bit more of a different look. Uh, even though that the, uh, the reference photos and stuff that I have, the flowers here uh, are very sage kind of a look um, and they are very similar in, to this but you know this is where I get to use my artistic license and say okay I want to pull this forward color wise and so I'm going to make these a little bit more green and um, a little brighter to kind of bring it forward and, and do that so um, that's kind of what the plan is to see how this all kind of looks and bring it forward here um, so yeah, so that's what I've done here so far. So let's kind of dive back into this and play around with it a little more. So I'm going to kind of right now, I want to make a few duplicates of this um, these this leaf layer here because I do want to copy this uh, texture and kind of fill in some of this area here. And then we'll come back and uh, move it around, switch it around, that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And then I'm going to hit T, and I'm going to come over here, flip it horizontally, and maybe rotate it a little bit. And I even could come up here to the warp tool, give that a second to kick in, kind of push this around. I don't have many of the uh, segments turn on. You can increase the split, which gives you more segments, but I don't really need that many for this. I just want to kind of twist it and turn it around a little bit and make it just a little different so it doesn't really look like a mirrored version per se. And some of this I'm going to go back in and just um, add more strokes and stuff over top of it. But this is just kind of a quick way to build up some of the texture quickly. So I'm just going to do that. And maybe right around here. Okay. So then on my bottom layer here, I'm just going to make a copy of this one. Then I'm going to select these three, oops, these three here and merge them. I'm going to hide this layer. And for these, I'm going to turn on protect transparency or lock transparency. And I'm going to go to filter, hue saturation. And let's bring the green over just a little bit, increase the saturation up a little bit, there we go, maybe something like that. And that kind of gives it a little bit distinction from what's behind it, at least I think so. I'm going to turn off the protect transparency. I'm going to duplicate this layer to turn off this. I'm going to go to multiply, bring that down to about 20, and then merge it down. Okay. Now I'm also going to go ahead and select this layer. I'm going to come down here to my ground. I'm going to press delete and then I'm going to do control D. So I got rid of all the texture pretty much that was behind that layer. Okay. Now I'm going to select one of these and just kind of 
put in some more of these. And some stalks here in the foreground. To kind of tie some of that together. underneath it, the new layer. I'm going to select that darker green, come down a little bit, and I'm going to put in just some random darker shapes, so it'll almost look like more like shadows. And I'm just drawing actually some of these stalks again. Maybe some of these grasses that I was doing earlier. some of this together. And this is one of those things where the texture starts to really kind of build up the, the feeling of it as far as like, you know, uh, how to describe it. it. It starts building the depth and the believability, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to desaturate some of this. I'm going to come up here and on top of this layer. I want to kind of put in a few, maybe not as many, but just a few spots. different kind of greenish color. Like so. Okay. And I may come back and even erase some of these. I don't know yet. the seagrass. Let's turn that off. Let me grab some of this green. Just kind of pull in. I'm going to put some of the straw color in, but I'm going to go to more desaturated.
something kind of like that. So I really kind of like how that looks. A few more of these green right here, maybe. Too thick. Yeah, something kind of like that. All right, so now let's put in some of these yellows because these flowers can be over top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do these in batches. So I'm going to kind of go in through some of the yellows and kind of put in all the, you know, the one yellow and then kind of come back and put in some of the other yellow and then kind of come back and put in some of the other yellow and build it up that way. So for example, I'm going to grab this yellow here and using my sketch as kind of a guide. Just kind of come in and just kind of quickly throw in some yellow. Don't have to stick 100% with it. But just kind of general idea of where these are. And I'm not usually a huge flower painter. And I'm not trying to paint a specific flower per se. I'm just painting the idea of some flowers. So I'm sure there's some botanists or biologists that are out there going, no! If any biologist or botanist ever see my paintings. Too many petals <laughs> facing the wrong way. To which I say, I don't care. I have artistic license, baby. I can do whatever I want. Artistic license. Superstar. It's like, you know, Bob Ross would say, it's your world, man. Pay whatever you want. So in my world, there's some yellow flowers. Because I think it goes well with the blues and the greens and the slight purples. And the oranges I'm going to add in for the centers will go really well as well. The auto save is my cue to hit save. something like that. And I'm going to grab this orange and just kind of throw in some orange. Kind of willy-nilly all over the place here. It's kind of good over here. Like a soul. Then I can come back, grab a little bit of this, throw some of that in there too. And now I'm going to 
inside my line layer, like so. And I'm going to switch this over to four. And I'm just going to kind of smudge some of this. If you want to spend time, if there's certain flowers that you like, and you're like, hey, I want to paint this flower and make it look like this, go for it. Now, the one thing I would recommend is maybe don't pick a flower that doesn't grow near an or ocean. Like, I'm pretty sure roses don't grow near an ocean. But if you want to put some roses near an ocean, again, it's your painting. Do what you want. It just might look a little odd to some people. But who's to say in your world, on your planet, you can't. Okay. Kind of obliterated that. Just a little bit of this brown. Now that I've got that there, the one other thing I want to do is I want to select this. And then I want to come down. I'm going to bring this size down. And I kind of want to think about if my light was coming from the upper left, like we talked about before. This may be just kind of highlighting some of these on that left hand side something like that All right and then before I do that grab a little bit of that one and then oops wrong button grab a little bit of this Maybe a 
knife smooth. Go kind of small. We're on four. Just kind of blend it around. Just kind of tighten some of this up a little bit. Again, how much is totally up to you. If you want it to be very impressionistic, don't really tighten it up that much. If you want it to be very realistic, spend a lot of time tightening it up. And if you're like me, you like it somewhere kind of in the middle. So just kind of quickly tighten some of it up. Okay, so the other thing you can do is once you've got the um, kind of the you know the rough shapes in and everything else like that, if you want to, if you decide, hey, I want to have these look a little more refined or polished, you can also go in and you can kind of go around them and define them with the um, selection tool. So, like, what you would want, what I would suggest doing is go in. 
and select them all. Like basically go in and draw each flower like so, so that you really define the petals. Okay. And then once you've got them selected, you can make sure you've got them all selected. Shift Control I, Delete Control D. And that kind of gives them a nice crisp edge, gives them more refined petals. And there you go. And you, again, spend as much time on that as you want to or as little. But there you go. You've got some nice, really better defined flower shapes. And it kind of gives you that, that look that you want. All right. So the only other thing that I would say here that I kind of personally want to do is. I'm thinking I would like to add maybe some water uh, highlights in the water and some highlights here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this flower sketch because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to turn on, turn off pigment. I'm going to add, go to linear dodge. And I'm going to come in here to this a really light grayish color. And I think I'm going to go to Seafoam. I'm going to add some sparkle here and some out here. And some out here. I'm actually going to move this in a second. I'm going to put this behind our, our grass. I'm going to do this in a couple layers. So I'll move this in just a second. So I kind of want to pull our eyes a little bit more towards this. I'm going to press 4. 
kind of soften that. So it just kind of makes it pop a little bit. Like that. Then we'll hit one again. And then four. Again, try and stay kind of horizontal. Something kind of like that. And I'm going to bring this down here. I don't think I need this one. Let's get rid of that one. All right. Let's come back up here above the flowers. Let's make another layer. Again, go to linear dodge. And let's go with this yellow. Uh, let's go with this, this one. And then four. Just kind of brighten up a couple of these flowers. In any place that it's too much, just erase it. All right. And come in here down to almost this yellowish white come in here to the airbrush just kind of bring in some light and then hit four So it's just kind of a really subtle thing. And you can just kind of paint in wherever you think you want to highlight. Here and there. Again, if you want to throw a few back out here on the water. Really possible to do. And you can also come in here, multiply layer. And kind of vignette some of this in the corners. And down at the bottom, just kind of smear it around a little bit. Break it up. And it just kind of makes it pop here and there, you know? So it's a really easy way to just kind of play with your shadows and, and different areas here and there to kind of make different elements stand out. You can overdo it. You can underdo it. So don't be afraid to play around with it, but, you know, just keep an eye on it. So I think we're about in here where we want to be. Thing maybe just maybe we'll put one more little layer here. Let's grab a pen brush. Let's go to this white. I just really like having it kind of flying around in here. So 
So just throw a few of those in there. I think it just kind of gives it some movement. The only other thing I would suggest with that is just come up here to Gaussian Blur. Slightly blur them. Just like that. And I think maybe kind of closing in on a maybe having a finished painting. The only other thing you might want to do that could be kind of fun is to maybe come in here with the spatter and just maybe throw in some um oh some just different color blues or stuff like that. I think this always works better just use the stencil. So if you want to use the stencil, the one that I like that you should have if you've got my stencil pack. Space works pretty good. Just throw some blue. A little bit of blue. Actually, I'm going to put this behind these flowers. Just some blue, maybe some white. It's all up to you if you want to do it or not. You don't have to do this step. I think it could just add some nice little bit of something to it. Okay. But other than that, I think we're going to call this one a done one. Um, I hope you guys liked it. I uh, hope it gave you some ideas on some different things to try and play around with. And ways to kind of play around with the filters to get that depth of field. So you've got that nice blurry kind of a background. You've got that atmospheric perspective. Uh, make sure to try out these brushes if you're a patron. Uh, I'm going to put it in there, the seafoam and the fluffy cloud. So that way you can play around with that. Some of these other ones, the wet snow and the rain, are already in there for patrons as well. And that way you can kind of give this a try. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the next one.